Hey there, fellows. Okay, it's hot outside, the weather is nice, and uh, has been for a while. And so a lot of people have been running into issues associated with them. Um, you see, when it gets hot, cars tend to become slower, the heat reduces horsepower, meaning the car isn't quite accelerating as it's meant to. As for when it's cold, it gets cold in the winter time. And you ask those same people like there's no traction. How do you even know your car accelerates better? And they respond with fuel consumption increases. And when you're driving in heavy traffic, the fuel in the tank tends to become hot. And apparently that also has an effect on engine operation. And so why don't we try and do the following with gasoline? First, we drive around on gasoline that it'd be ambient temperature, like around 20 degrees Celsius. After that, we go ahead and freeze it, get it down to sub-zero temperature, and also try heating it up, all the way up to boiling temperature, which it should be said can vary. So yeah, guys, we'd better investigate. Drive around in a car, do some acceleration testing, measure the fuel consumption. We're gonna have to make some kind of thermos. That's going to allow us to keep the fuel at low freezing temperature as well as at above freezing temps. We pour the gasoline into this thing, head out to the test track and settle the dispute. See whether engine operation changes depending on fuel temperature or it doesn't. Right, well, let's go to the test track to get some answers. Let's do this. Does gasoline temperature affect engine performance? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, so we've brought this wonderful tank to the test track, and so now that is one liter of gasoline. We've dropped this wonderful thing into there, and now let's get a temperature reading. Okay, that's 22, fluctuating to 23. Now let's pour it into this here tank. I've got the sender unit. Okay, let's measure the 0 to 100 km an hour acceleration time on gasoline with a temperature of 22 degrees. It's all fairly simple, we pour it in, head for the line and accelerate without worrying that the gasoline might get hot. As you can see, there's just one hose, no return line, so it's all good. Okay, well, let's see what happens at this temperature. Okay, let's fit this and head out. Warm 22 degree gasoline. Okay, so check this out. The thermos contains one liter of gasoline, accelerate to 100 k's and brake. And check the result. Reset, and off we go. Without launching it too hard. That's 80, 90, 100. Stopping the car, so 6 seconds to 60. And 13.9 to get to 100. I feel like that's a reasonable time for such a car, though it's got a 1.6 liter engine. And now I suggest we put the race logic into odometer mode and see how far this car can go on whatever gasoline is left in the tank after a 0 to 100 pull at full throttle. I guess I should put the gear selector into L, get the revs up to 2 grand and uh, just put around. See how long the gasoline at this temperature lasts, uh, what's left of it. Okay, well, let's get going. Start the car and off we go. Let's rack up the meters. Okay, so look here, we're coming up to 4 kilometers, there we go. We've done 4K 60 meters.
Так, так. We are still moving. And that's a wrap. Yep. That's it. 6,892 meters. We'll call it 6,900. Almost 7,000, and that's actually pretty good. 6,900. On one liter after a full throttle pull, I was driving while keeping the revs at about 2,000. Tremendous. Freezing minus 30 degree gasoline. And now we've whipped out this lovely box. Oh yeah, that is so good. Now we have to pour this so-called dry ice into our thermos. Closing it. Or the tank to be nice and cool inside. Here we have one liter of gasoline, plus 30, very nice. We're gonna pour it into the thermos and wait for it to... I suppose it'll get down to some sub-zero temperature. And at that point, it'll be time for... Cold gasoline testing. Let's get to it. Check that out, guys. We've barely even assembled the thing. And the gasoline is already at 7 degrees, holy cow. Bonus experiment. It's hot outside, so we decided to cool off some drinking water. And look at that, I dropped a bit of ice into it. And see what's happening? That there is carbon dioxide. And if I were to close the bottle, it'll then be very eager to escape. And how are you not supposed to horse around here? Don't try this at home. Ow, these really bite your fingers. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's try this out. No need to go too far. You want to blow up the toilet? I'm going to put it right here. Are we doing this? Testing the bottle's durability. Right, that's about what we set out to accomplish. Obviously, don't try this at home. But why not have a bit of fun if you can? Freezing minus 30 degree gasoline. So here's the situation, guys. With the help of some dry ice, it's plus 30 degrees Celsius outside, but the gasoline is at minus 30 degrees. So we're simulating winter conditions when a car was parked. What was that? Storm clouds. The car was parked outside and the gasoline is freezing. Oh, the temperature keeps dropping. I'd imagine it'll get down to about minus 33. Back to the line and let's try this out. Here we go. <laughs> now, this might be self-hypnosis, but... That's 100. Make sure nothing falls. Six seconds. So the 0 to 60 time is the same, and it was 13.7 to 100 k's. But then, two-tenths doesn't seem like much of a difference now, does it? But now we try driving around on cold gasoline to see what the situation is with fuel consumption. We remember the previous result, so let's get right to it. That's a lap counter in the corner. Are we done? Yes, we are. 7 kilometers, 664 meters. That is one hell of a result. Interesting. Okay, so we've tried cold gasoline and now it's time for the hot stuff. As you can see, Jessica is in the house. And we've got this thing on electric kettle. Some water, a bucket, a bottle. The idea is to get the water boiling, pour it into the thermos to make it nice and hot inside, and also we'll use the kettle to get the gasoline boiling. I mean, who's to say we can't? Definitely safer than using a torch, right? I guess we're about to find out. So let's get the gasoline really hot. 
pour it into the fuel tank and see how the car do. Let's do this. Here's the situation. The boiling water is already in the thermos. And the gasoline is getting there quick. Like super quick. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it is certainly boiling. That's one liter poured in. Everything's hot. Okay, guys, it's even boiling inside the tank because of the hot water. The temperature is actually rising, it's almost at 70. Not even almost, that is 70. And we'd better get straight to testing. Let's go. Boiling 70 degree gasoline. Hundred. Slow it down, easy does it. Don't let the fuel tank fall. Zero to sixty time. Five point nine. Zero to a hundred, thirteen point seven. Those are the results. The gasoline temperature is at seventy six degrees. Let's go. Right, that's two kilometers. Eighty four degrees, holy cow. The sound. We're done. Four kilometers. For real? Four kilometers, 62 meters. Where'd it go? Did it actually evaporate? Okay, so look here. On boiling gasoline, we barely covered any distance. We only traveled four kilometers. Well, and 62 meters. Well, this was rather interesting. They say hot gasoline is better for the mixture and atomization and whatnot. And as such, you're not gonna need as much. Because it's gonna be in the right state. Yeah, we have heard that sort of conjecture. About low fuel consumption. But other folks were of the opposite opinion that cold gasoline has higher density, it's gonna expand when it's fed into the motor, and there will be a deficit of air. But as a matter of fact, the piping hot boiling gasoline was only good for about 4 kilometers. And a few meters, it was about 60, so yeah. Call it 4 kilometers and 60 meters, and that was it. But it was fizzing in there, I could smell gasoline, which leads me to assume that it was rapidly evaporating. The fizzing just never stopped. As for the gasoline that was at ambient temperature, well, I mean, the outside temperature was a bit higher than the gasoline temp, so let's call it room temperature, like 20, 21, 22 degrees, whatever. The point is the car drove, uh, let's say, 6,900 meters, for good measure. Which is almost a good 7 kilometers. And on chilled freezing gasoline, I'm guessing it barely evaporates at all with it being so cold. And in the end, we covered well over 7 kilometers of pavement. 7600 meters to be exact. Which is... quite a marked difference. As for the 0 to 100 kilometer acceleration, no matter if it was on hot, lukewarm or chilled gasoline, the figure was the same. Well, either 13.7 or 13.9. Close says makes no difference. The car was always happy to move along. Meaning everything works as it should. And so those are the results. You can make your own assertions on whether gas should be heated or chilled. Or whether you should just leave it alone. But that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.